unfortunately, after this <laughs> this SBT session, on my last rep of deadlifts, I strained my back. Um, I think it's my glute medius. I met with the PT. So this was a Friday that I did that. Today's Monday. I met with the PTs on Saturday. And we're just doing rehab now. Uh, uh, it was to the point where I couldn't even walk on Saturday morning without pain. And took some Advil, did some rehab exercises. Uh, was able to at least throughout the day on Saturday, it started to alleviate um, in terms of pain, but still hurt. So, um, but today's Monday, not, not feeling too bad, but also not feeling great. I don't know if I'm gonna work out yet. Uh, but if I do, I'll probably, I just text my coach and he said, if, if you can't go work out, go work out. And if I can't put my feet on the bench, because he said, just do bench and then for the squat and deadlift rehab, use that as my squat and deadlift day. Because today was technically an SPD day. Uh, but for the bench press portion of the workout, he's like, if you can at least bench with your feet up with no pain, he's like, do that. So. We're still gonna try to bench. I'll probably go to the gym just because <laughs> I, I am fiending to get in. Um, this is it, this is a part of the journey and here we are. After suffering from injury, which consequently saw the athlete not competing for over a year, the last time we saw Taylor Hatwood compete was at last season's IPF Worlds, where he was momentously handed a defeat by Carl Johansson, sending the sports of powerlifting into a frenzy. Said it before, but I gotta say it again. This is a very important lift for Taylor. It. He absolutely needs it. He's very vulnerable if he doesn't hit this. Because if he doesn't hit this, then Calais only needs 327 to go past. Yeah, he'll load up. I think it is now. It. Now it's locked out, though. Now it's got to be. Was that not locked out? He doesn't have a white light to contest it. Yeah, let's let's get. A... It's overturned. It's overturned. Tim Monigatti gets Tim? the deadlift world record. Goes into the lead. Yeah, more importantly, goes into the lead. Holy smokes! Taylor Atwood has been defeated by Tim Monigatti. And is Kale Johansson going to push him down to third? Cal, jo Kale Johansson, 328 even, trying to pull from bronze. Swap his bronze for gold overall. Will the junior world champion become the open world champion? Ryan, I believe, I believe he can do it. Is Kale the future? He might be the present. One looks certain. That one looks certain. And Callie Johansson has done it in a startling upset in the 74 kilo class. Huge win. However, since his departure from competition, excitedly, there have been increasing whispers of the former three time IPF world champion and world record holder, Taylor, returning to the platform. Many spectators were eager to see Taylor compete as a 74 or 75 kilograms athlete, anticipating an exciting battle against the current reigning IP of 74 or 75 kilograms world champion and world record holder Austin Perkins versus a healthy tailor in the mix. Such a direct matchup would have most likely resulted in a stellar collision of historic proportions. Unfortunately, it is not to be simply because Taylor has announced competing within the 82.5 or 83 kilograms weight class, possibly for the foreseeable future. However, this is a weight class that we are all witnessing increasingly stacked with some monster eaters. On the US side, Taylor will most likely be encountered on the platform by a real assertive and hungry Joseph Borestein, who currently holds the total world record with a monster total of 865 kilograms, alongside 
the former two-time IPF world champion, Delaney Wallace, who has frankly not reflected his true abilities on the platform. Not to mention the former two-time IPF world champion and world record holder, Russell Ori, who similarly conceded defeat recently at the 2024 IPF Worlds by the hands of Jiren Skengamo, will be first to be given the opportunity to seal his path to the 2025 IPF Worlds for another chance at achieving an unprecedented third IPF Worlds title whilst competing at the upcoming Sheffield Championships. Whether Taylor will remain as an 82.5 or 83 kilograms athlete for the foreseeable future remains to be seen. As the 2024 powerlifting season draws to a close, Taylor, somewhat unexpectedly, but excitedly stepped on the platform at the Powerlift in America, Scare Strong Meet 3. Seeing that it was a local meet, there wasn't much competition to test his fortitude. His closest rival was Rick Kamianeski, who entered the meet with a competition best total of 555 kilograms. Competing at a body weight of 82.6 kilograms, Taylor, for his opening squat, attempted an effortless squat of 260 kilograms. Such as Taylor Atwood being in the game for so long. 11 years competing now. Insane. I mean, I didn't even know what powerlifting was 11 years ago. Taylor Atwood looking to make a comeback here at Scary Strong 3 has not competed since the 2023 IPF World Championships where he placed bronze, was unseated from the throne, used to be called the pound-for-pound pound king. I'm sure we all remember him doing 838.5. Well, you're speaking in the past tense right now. I think he's looking to reclaim that throne. I, right? I think he might be. Let's see how it goes today. 260 kilos for his opening attempt. This will tell all. Wow. wow. I think we could see some big jumps we're in today. for We're in for a surprise today, I'm sure. Oh, he looks confident. Which is 2.5 kilograms above his heaviest squat opening of 257.5 kilograms whilst competing within the 82.5 or 83 kilograms weight class. However, a 260 kilogram squat opening includes being 15 kilograms below his heaviest squat of 275 kilograms as a 74 or 75 kilograms athlete. The last time we witnessed Taylor open with a squat of 275 kilograms, he set a new incomprehensible world record total of 838.5 kilograms. In effect, creating a tectonic shift in redefining the boundless physiological possibility of an athlete competing within the respective 74 or 75 kilograms weight class forever. Interestingly, his world record total of 838.5 kilograms which he set in 2021, was just 4.5 kilograms below Russell Ori's season best and world record total of 843 kilograms. Taylor, remarkably, outranked other 82.5 or 83 kilograms athlete, such as the current veteran, Sean Noriago, who had the second season best total of 825 kilograms, and Delaney Wallace at third ranking, with a total of 822.5 kilograms. Within the 2021 powerlifting season, only six 82.5 or 83 kilograms athletes totaled 800 kilograms or more. Taylor, for a second squat attempt, once again attempted another duck soup squat of 275 kilograms, which represents a 15 kilogram squat increment, which hasn't deviated away from his approximate average second squat increment of 14.47 kilograms as a 74 or 75 kilograms athlete. Just a movie that, that could be scary. I feel like Harry Potter could be, it could be a bit frightening for some. Taylor last competed at 
the 2023 IPF World Championships. And he actually squatted 270 kilos there. So he's already pacing a bit above that meet. He is competing as an 83 kilo lifter here. Has a goal of contending for the top spot at PA Nats, either as a 74 or an 83 kilo lifter. See how this goes. Wow. Blows that up. There's that Atwood smile we've been missing. Now his best is... However, a 275 kilogram squat is 1.85% and or 5 kilograms more than his last two mid-second squat attempts, where he was reportedly battling not only his opponents on the platform, but a plaguing injury or possibly injuries as I previously mentioned. So within the six months leading into the Sheffield, I sustained three injuries and one bout of food poisoning. I had a back injury that I sustained at towards the end of January, and I had a pet tendon issue <laughs> in February, and then food poisoning hit me 36 hours out from the meet. Now, although I was battling all of these injuries, my coaches did a phenomenal job of kind of adapting the training stimulus and what was needed to get me onto the platform to perform at my best. So of the three injuries, the quad tendonitis was certainly the most painful and the most difficult to deal with, and it actually implicated the squats more than I had anticipated. Taylor would increase his third and final squat attempt at the Powerlifting America Scare Strong Me 3 by a 10 kilograms margin, resulting in a squat of 285 kilograms. His redemption meat. 285 kilos on the bar. That's 628 pounds. What did he weigh in at today? He weighed in just a bit under 83 kilos. Again, looking to make a statement, looking to contend for a top spot at PA Nats. He has not squatted this weight since 2021, so this would be a big this win for Taylor. This would be a huge squat for the comeback. Again, I remember watching 2023 Worlds where he was he was unseated as the champ. And I remember at that meet, he, he did squat 277.5, but he missed it on the technicality. So, I mean, this is, this is just gonna be a big one for him. And based on how his second attempt moved, I think this should go. On the edge of my seat here. Let's see it, Atwood. Yes. yes. Wow. And he had room. Three white lights. A lot of room. 1.79% and or 5 kilograms more than his heaviest historical third squat of 280 kilograms as an 82.5 or 83 kilograms athlete. Also, a 285 kilogram squat means that Taylor scored 3.03% and or 8.37 kilograms above his 74 or 75 kilograms upper baseline squat projection of 276.63 kilograms. Given the apparent ease with which he successfully attempted a 285 kilogram squat, raises the question of whether he's regained his 2021 form. At the 2021 USAP Air Raw Nationals, we witnessed not only Taylor Atwood set a new total world record of 838.5 kilograms, but also set an amazing world record squat of 303 kilograms, beating Austin's squat world record of 300 kilograms, which he set in the prior season. After squatting 303 kilograms, we witnessed a squat projection rise between a lower baseline squat projection of 309.03 kilograms and an upper baseline squat projection of 313.95 kilograms. Considering is competing at a much heavier body weight, such may provide an ample opportunity to surpass his 2021 season 74 or 75 kilograms baseline squat projection. Quintessentially, a 285 kilogram squat at current places Taylor at number 46 on the current season global rankings and approximately number 85 on the all-time 82.5 or 83 kilograms list of best recorded squats. Whilst his squat performance didn't display his most probable full potential, however, 
historically as both a 74 or 75 kilograms and 82.5 or 83 kilograms at lead, Taylor tends to relatively on average rely more on both the bench to build his totals with a reliance of 25.56% and deadlift at 39.26%, specifically as a 74 or 75 kilograms at lead. Curiously, his highlighted bench reliance of 25.56% is 2.18% more than the 82.5 or 83 kilograms group average of 23.38%, which includes some of the all-time top 10 athletes at current. This further underscores Taylor's significant reliance on the bench to build his totals in both weight classes. Oppositely, his deadlift reliance whilst competing within the 82.5 or 83 kilograms weight class tends to experience a slight decrease by 0.45%. On the flip side, Taylor's average squat reliance actually goes up by the same 0.45%. I would like to clarify that when I refer to the bench, squat and deadlift reliance in this context, I simply mean the proportion of each three disciplines in relation to the amount that any of the disciplines makes up an athlete's total. For his opening bench, the historically unyielding former IPF world champion opened with a bench of 185 kilograms, which is his second heaviest bench opening to date, including being 1.25 kilograms above his average opening as an 82.5 or 83 kilograms athlete. all-time best bench of 202.5 kilos and this will tell the story let's see how this opener moves for him wow oh my gosh you know, that was so easy individually his bench opening is 2.5 kilograms below his heaviest opening of 187.5 kilograms whilst competing within the heavier 82.5 or 83 kilograms weight class. Interestingly, his bench opening of 185 kilograms is one of three other times he opened with the same attempt throughout his competition history. In all two other instances, Taylor managed to achieve a new competition best bench. Therefore, such poses the question of whether we were inclined to witness another competition best from Taylor, who after the squat round appeared to be in optimal form. Taylor exited the 74 or 75 kilograms weight class with a final bench projection ranging between a lower baseline projection of 197.5 kilograms and an upper baseline bench projection of 202.47 kilograms. Keep in mind that he squatted 3.02% above his 74 or 75 kilograms upper baseline exit squat projection of 276.64 kilograms within the first round of the meet. Coupled with the fact that his bench at the past meets appeared largely unimpaired by his reported injury. For instance, his squat has steadily regressed by a whopping average of 13.11% almost immediately after squatting his world record squat of 303 kilograms. His bench on the other hand experienced a lesser regression of 0.29%. Given these circumstances, anything could have happened in the second round at the PA scare strong meet, especially since Taylor was competing at a significantly heavier body weight. For his second bench attempt, Taylor increased his second attempt by a 10 kilograms margin, resulting in a seemingly effortless bench of 195 kilograms. Atwood, 195 for his second attempt. His last meet, he had only pressed 197, so this is within two and a half kilos of his best press. His his opener was very fast. His opener fast. was easy. His opener looked like a warm up, honestly. I wonder if he's looking to hit an all time PR here today. He could be. I mean, his best is 202.5. Could be closing in on that incremental 2.5 kilo PR or perhaps even matching it. But first, he's got to press this second attempt. Let's see how it goes. 
Wow. Easy. Magical. Very, very easy. Which is 2.5 kilograms below is heaviest bench of 197.5 kilograms as an 82.5 or 83 kilograms at least, including being 4.04% and or 7.58 kilograms more than his average second bench attempt of 187.41 kilograms whilst competing as a 74 or 75 kilograms at least. For his third and final bench attempt, we witnessed Taylor rather tactfully increased his bench by a further 7.5 kilograms margin, which is 3.75 kilograms above his historical average third bench increment of 3.75 kilograms as an 82.5 or 83 kilograms at least, and 2.31 kilograms above his third bench increment of 5.19 kilograms as a 74 or 75 kilograms at least. As such, resulting in an eyebrow raising duck soup bench of 202.5 kilograms. Bring that focus to the platform, as always. This should go. I mean, his second attempt absolutely flew. Let's see it. Yes, wow. sir. Oh, oh my gosh. There is no better way to say I am back. Marking the second time he has successfully attempted a bench of 202.5 kilograms in his overall sporting history. Whilst a 202.5 kilograms bench is technically a personal best bench for Taylor as an 82.5 or 83 kilograms at least, it reflects a stagnant progression when compared to his final upper baseline bench projection of 202.47 kilograms as a 74 or 75 kilograms at least. Overall, this indicates a 0% progression whilst he transitioned as an 82.5 or 83 kilograms at least. It's quite plainly evident once we witnessed the sheer ease of his third bench attempt that his stagnant progression was intentional, a strategy to signal to his direct rivals within his new respective weight class by possibly misleading them about his true potential, especially if considering the world has not yet witnessed Taylor compete largely as a 82.5 or 83 kilograms at least. Therefore, such qualifies the former two-time IPF world champion, a rather dark horse amongst his rivals. Throughout the meet, both his squat and bench are shown promising sign of a possible greater potential. As I stated earlier, if he's able to regain his 2021 season form, we could be in line to witness Remarkable competition on the platform from Taylor. Curiously, after setting his world record total at the 2021 USAP L Raw Nationals, Taylor based on projected total stood between 854.23 kilograms and 873.30 kilograms, which means that we have not truly seen the maximal potential of the athlete. But it still begs the question whether age will play a factor in his level of competitiveness within future matchups. The average age of an 82.5 or 83 kilograms athlete that has won an IPF World Classic title currently stands at 27. Individually, Jurins is the oldest athlete in the history of the championships at 35 years old to have won the IPF World title. Also, to add further, the approximate average age of all athletes throughout the history of the 82.5 or 83 kilograms weight class that has broken the total war record stands at 26 years old. Taylor is currently 36 years old. Conventionally, as an athlete ages, they are typically more susceptible to injuries, which can impede an athlete's further progress in the sport. On the other hand, experience can play a positive contributing factor to remain highly competitive on the platform. Over time, advancements in training and nutrition have significantly improved, contributing to an athlete's ability to remain highly competitive on the platform for a longer period. The reigning 82.5 or 83 kilograms IPF World Classic Champion, Jurins, is a prime example of limitless possibilities. At the age of 35, he saw his total progress from a 2023 season best total 
of 812.5 kg to 845 kg, which represents a progression of 4% and or a whopping 32.5 kg being added to his total in an approximately 6-month span. However, when compared with his overall competition best total of 820.5 kg prior to the 2024 powerlifting season, such equates to a modest but sizable progression of 2.99% and or 24.5 kg being added to his prior competition best total of 820.5 kg. To dispel any such continuous lingering doubts from some spectators, Taylor impressively opened with a deadlift of 305 kilograms. For Mr. Atwood's opening deadlift, this will give him a 792.5 kilo total already on his opening attempt. Getting danger. I mean, this would already best what he did in competition last time he competed at the 2023 IPF World Championships. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen, but he had a very, very strong last pull, or very strong last post on Instagram, at least. I'm sure this is going to fly for him. Already getting dangerously close to that big 800 kilo total barrier. Nice. Wow. Move like the empty bar. Similar to his 2021 deadlift opening at the USAP Era Nationals, where he eventually set the current 74 or 75 kilograms deadlift world record of 340.5 kilograms. It would increase his second deadlift attempt by a 20 kilograms margin, 2.5 kilograms more than his average second deadlift increment for his last four meets, which stood at 17.5 kilograms. Such resulted in a ceaseless, breezy deadlift of 325 kilograms, just 0.5 kilograms below his attempt selection of 325.5 kilograms at the 2021 USAPL Raw Nationals. I mean, he hasn't hit over 800 since he hit that legendary 838.5 kilo performance back in 2021. And when he first hit 325, that was an American record, right? Yes, sir. I'm sure this is going to fly for him based off what we saw on Instagram. And again, I mean, having to deal with so much adversity, so much injury, we love to see this for him. Let's go! Yes, sir! Locked in! After credit bouts of reported injuries for the last two seasons, for his third and last attempt of the meet, Taylor loaded 342.5 kilograms onto the bar, which is 2 kilograms above his 74 or 75 kilograms world record deadlift of 340.5 kilograms. 42.5 on the bar for Mr. Atwood. This would give him a 830 kilo total if he hits this. Look how fired up and focused he is. I'm sure we have all missed this type of energy that Taylor always, always brought to the platform. Hasn't competed since 2023 IPF Worlds. Making a comeback here in the 83 kilo class. Taylor knows this is his chance to prove the doubters and the haters wrong. Let's see it. Everyone waits with bated breath. Come on, Taylor. Come on! Wow. Oh my gosh! Taylor, Taylor Atwood. Atwood. In this moment, he not only quieted much of any doubts about his return to competing on the platform by successfully deadlifting 342.5 kilograms without breaking a sweat, but showcased a remarkable spirit of perseverance. At first glance, a 342.5 kilograms may not appear to be much of a progression whilst competing as a 82.5 or 83 kilograms that lead especially if taking account of his competition best deadlift of 340.5 kilograms as a 74 or 75 kilograms that lead. 
and his current personal best deadlift of 342.5 kilograms as a 82.5 or 83 kilograms athlete. Ultimately, his deadlift of 342.5 kilograms equates to a progression of just 0.59% in parallel to his personal best deadlift of 340.5 kilograms as a 74 or 75 kilograms athlete. To truly appreciate the significance of a 342.5 kilograms deadlift, we must consider Taylor's projected baseline as a 74 or 75 kilograms athlete, who stood at a projected upper baseline of 318.44 kilograms after he experienced an average regression of 12.9 percent after his 2021 powerlifting season. This suggests that he had progressed remarkably by exceeding his upper baseline deadlift projection of 318.44 kilograms by a 7.56 percent margin as an 82.5 or 83 kilograms athlete with a competition best deadlift of 342.5 kilograms. Taylor finished the meet with a total of 830 kilograms, 8.5 kilograms below his competition best total of 838.5 kilograms as a 74 or 75 kilograms athlete. But nevertheless, whilst it was sort of surprising that Taylor chose to compete within the 82.5 or 83 kilograms weight class, given the current landscape or dynamics of the weight class. However, one thing is certain, it is fantastic to see an athlete of his caliber gracing the platform once again. Hopefully, we can look forward to exciting future battles for all of us to witness, especially within the forthcoming 2025 powerlifting season.